talked about linear, quadratic, and exponential equations in the last year. Exponential and quadratics we've talked about in the last week or so. Um, and we have actually done this before. I've taught this to you before, but it's been a little while, so we're going to teach it again. And I actually did never put it on a test, so now it's going to be on a test. So um, here's how you can tell if it's linear, quadratic, or uh, exponential. Basically, I'm going to go through an example of each kind so that you can figure out how you can tell, given a set of data, if it's linear, quadratic, or exponential. And I guarantee you there will be at least one or two of these um, on the end of course exam. There always are. They don't give you the function. All they do is give you data. And they have to ask you, does this model linear, quadratic, or exponential? Here's what they all look like. Let's start with the linear. What you do is you look at your output values, your y values, and you look and see what the difference is in between each of the values. So if we do a little, some of you guys are going to recognize this. We do this. What is the difference between negative 110 and negative 100? It's just 10, right? There's a difference of 10. <coughs> How about between 100 and 90? Difference of 10. 90 and 80? Also difference of 10. 80 and 70? Yeah. Right. When this happens, it's a linear, uh, a linear function. So what you can do is you look at your y values and find the differences in them. And if they're all the same, then it is a linear function. That is what a linear <coughs> uh, set of data will look like. Is that the answer? Right. I kind of gave you the answer on these because it says in the example, a linear function. We already knew it's linear. I just wanted you to see... How did we know it was linear? And that's how we know it's linear. So the next one's quadratic, though. Right. See, and I give. I just want you to see what each of these examples look like. So when you do the homework, you can do this to them. Uh, example two is a quadratic function. Uh, we already know that, and let me show you why it's a quadratic function. We're going to do the same thing as we did on example one. We're going to find the difference between negative three and positive three. What's the difference there? Six. What's the difference in three and thirteen? Not 6. 10. And then 13 and 27. 14. 27 and 45. It's 18. Okay. Um, so at this point, given if we didn't know it was a quadratic, at this point we would check to see if it was linear. And if these were all the same, we would say, oh, it's linear. However, they're not the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that again. Okay, because if the difference of the differences are the same, then it's quadratic. So we're going to do that again. So for between 6 and 10, four, four. that's 4. Four, between four, 10 and 14, four, it's four. Four, four, 4. And it's 4. Okay, we understand that it's 4. <laughs> um, so since the difference of the difference is the same, that's how we know it's quadratic. That's what will happen on a quadratic. So do you just see the difference? Linear, it happens the first time you do it. Quadratic, it happens the second time you do it. And that's how you know it's quadratic. <laughs> yes, Zach? Does it, have, does it just happen to be that they're all fours, being like quad with root four? Oh, no, good question. Uh, Zach asked if a quadratic, uh, if this will be always 4, and that is not correct. It will not always be 4. Sometimes it could be 10, could be 12, could be negative 7. I don't know. So. Okay, so that's example 2. Any other questions? Okay, example 3. <coughs> this one, what do we think this one's going to be? It's going to be exponential, and let me show you why. Okay, here's what you're going to do on these. You're going to look at the difference in your data. Negative. We're going to see this is the process you want to take on all of these. We're going to look at the difference. Well, this one, the difference is 2. This one, the difference is 6. This one, the difference is, is 18. On these two, the difference is 54, I believe, isn't it? Is it 54? Yeah. 54. The difference is 54. Shh. Okay. So we look at this. These differences are not the same, so we know it's not linear. Okay, we know it's not linear. So let's check it again. <coughs> See if we get the same here. Three. This one is 4. 
Difference here is 12. <coughs> difference here is... What's the difference here? I don't know. Either way, thirty-six. Either way, our differences are not the same, so it's not quadratic. So that's what an exponential function is going to look like. It's not going to be linear. It's not going to be quadratic. And here's how you know for 100% sure that it's exponential. And so it's already been mentioned a few times. I've heard it. But if you notice, what's the pattern here? What's happened to get from here to here? Multiply by 3. To get from here to here? Multiply by 3. Here to here? So we keep multiplying by 3. So if, and you, and if you can tell that without having to do all of this, if you can do it without having to eliminate linear and quadratic, that's, that's great. Just do, you know, notice that it's, it's going to be, uh, your function is going to be multiplying by 3 every single time or multiplying by the same number each and every time, and that will mean it's exponential. Okay, so that's how that's exponential. And that's how you can determine if it's linear, quadratic, or exponential. Yeah.